Hey, so AMD Ryzen is all the things right now, and with it came the X370 chipset. So I was wondering, how well would Ryzen do as a storage server? So let's do some benchmarks. And I hit my microphone. First, let's take a quick look at the block diagram for the AMD Ryzen CPU connected to a X370 chipset. The first thing that's immediately apparent is that the NVMe drive, be it U.2 or M.2, is connected directly to the CPU and not through the chipset. So that means that it has its own dedicated PCIe 3.0 lanes, 4 to be exact, and that basic, uh, in, th in theory, we could stress the NVMe drive and all SATA ports at the same time and not have a bottleneck. Let's find out. The X370 chipset is also connected using PCIe 3.0 times 4 and it has all the SATA ports that are available. The X370 chipset natively supports six SATA 600 connections. So how much bandwidth does PCIe 3.0 times 4 give you? Well, each PCIe 3.0 lane can carry one gigabyte per second of transfers. So having X4 or four lanes means we can transfer four gigabytes a second. And as I mentioned, the chipset and the NVMe drive each have their own set of four lanes. So that should give you a theoretical bandwidth of eight gigabytes per second. Great. Taking another quick look at that block diagram, most motherboards will come with six SATA 600 ports, but some, like my Gigabyte Aorus uh, AX370 Gaming 5, have eight ports. The way they achieve this is by using two of the eight PCIe 2.0 lanes that the chipset exposes. They link it to SATA Express, and each SATA Express connector can also be used for another SATA 600 port, giving you eight ports in total. During this video, I'll be mainly showing you Atto benchmarks because we're testing throughput performance of the Ryzen and the chipset. But I did do a lot more benchmarks like Crystal Diskmark and Anvil. I've linked those in the description below towards my blog post where I detail all the benchmarks and have a, a write-up of basically everything we discuss in this video. Check it out. For testing, I'm using the Gigabyte Aorus AX370 Gaming 5, as I mentioned before, running on BIOS version F5C. To test the NVMe slot, I have a Samsung 960 Pro, 512 gigabytes. And to test all the SATA ports, I have a mix of uh, six SATA SSDs. Now, normally I wouldn't advise to raid these together, but since we're testing chipset and CPU throughput, that shouldn't be a problem in this case. Which SSDs? I have three Crucial MX300 525 gigabytes, two Samsung 840 Pro 256 gigabytes, and one Samsung 840 Evo 250 gigabytes. Basically, all the SSDs I could scrounge together in my house. <laughs> Before we take a look at the benchmarks, one thing to note, to get the 960 Pro NVMe drive working correctly, I had to install the Samsung NVMe drivers. If I didn't, right, it worked, but write performance would be horrible. So remember, if you're installing an NVMe drive, install the supplier's NVMe drivers to make it work correctly. Okay, let's uh, take a look at how it performed. First, let's take a look at some single drive tests. To the left is the 960 Pro NVMe drive connected to X4 PCIe 3.0. And to the right is a single 840 Pro uh, SATA 600 drive. As you can see, both seem to be hitting the rated transfer speeds. And well, that seems to be doing well. Here is also a quick look at the 960 Pro performance in Crystal Disk Mark. Since this is using an NVMe drive on the new AM4 X370 Ryzen platform, it's interesting to see how well it does in random and random high queue depth workloads. But both look pretty good actually, so no problems there. Leaving the NVMe drive for what it is, let's stripe together all those six SSDs and see what throughput we can achieve. And here are the graphs. 
To the left is the six SSDs striped together or in RAID 0 using Windows 10 Pro. And to the right are the same six SSDs, but then pit, uh, set to RAID 0 using the RAID mode in the BIOS. As you can see, both modes seem to be performing about even. Sadly, I don't have eight SSDs available to stress all the ports, but from all my measurements, uh, I believe the chipset has more than enough bandwidth available for you to saturate all ports at the same time without any bottlenecking. So that's great. Talking about the BIOS or chipset RAID, although RAID 0 performed pretty good, RAID 1 and RAID 10 didn't perform that great. And also the, at more advanced levels like RAID 5 were locked out because basically it says we don't have a license for it. Also, the RAID Expert uh, software in Windows wouldn't start, or it would start, but it would say you can't log in because you don't have a license. So I don't know what's up there, but uh, if you're using anything else than RAID 0, I'd use software RAID instead of the chipset. On to the final test. Here we have to the left the 960 Pro again, and to the right the Windows striped 6 SSDs. As you can see, both are still achieving great performance. And here is a screenshot of the resource manager at the same time while performing the benchmark. And as you can see, we're getting over six gigabytes per second. That means we could saturate six 10 gigabit links and still have performance to spare. That is an excellent result and also proves that the bandwidth between the chipset and the NVMe drive is indeed separate. To conclude, I think we can say that the RAID, or at least the RAID 0 implementation of the chipset is working adequately, but that especially the HCI implementation is working great, using Windows to RAID it together, or using store spaces and all kinds of tests I did, all performed very good. And since we have a separate bandwidth for the NVMe drive and the disks, this could be a great platform for a storage server. You could easily add eight more ports using a cheap LSI controller and then use a caching SSD for something like ZFS. Bonus feature, the Ryzen CPU supports ECC memory. So all great stuff. And that's the end of the video. As I mentioned before, make sure to check out the blog post linked in the description below. And um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you liked the video, give it a like and maybe subscribe to the channel for future updates. And uh, hope to see you in one of those videos. Bye bye.